This is Dante Williams, and you're watching Dante's Boxing Nation. Dante's Boxing Nation, what's going on, guys? For all the people out there that were told by your parents when you were a little kid that the boogeyman doesn't exist, you can go back to their ass now and say, you was a damn lie. Because I done seen the damn boogeyman. And that motherfucker is in the 122 pound division. And his name is Guillermo Rigando. Okay? Look at that picture right there. That is a scary man right there. You guys don't understand what I mean when I say this. This is a scary man. I haven't seen a man instill this much fear into another man's heart since Mike Tyson. Since Iron Mike Tyson. I mean, it is unbelievable. It is unbelievable. I believe you have fighters at the 122 pound division that are waking up in cold sweats thinking about being in the ring with Guillermo Rigo. I can imagine him right now waking up like, whew, thank God that was a dream. Man, I heard the bell ring and all I seen was Rigo in front of me. Okay? That's a scary ass man right there. That is a scary ass man. I mean, you got quote unquote Tough ass warriors that are running from this man. Imagine, imagine what type of fear you have to instill to elicit that kind of respect from everybody in your division. So we have a guy that's this dominant, right? Everyone is afraid of him. He's considered pound for pound Number three, the best fighter in the world. It can even be argued he's pound for pound number two. The best fighter in the world, right? Now remember, when Nonito Donaire was considered number three, number four, number five, Rigo wanted that spot, and he took it. Now that he has that spot, guess what? Don't nobody want it. They like, forget it. He could be the best in the world. Let him be the best. I ain't going in there and getting my ass whooped. I mean, that's what these fighters are saying, and it's unbelievable how many fighters are saying this. For those of you guys who don't know, Chris Avalos, a fighter who I like, by the way. I watched him coming up, and I'll tell you, you know, he was a good, he's a good fighter. You know, he has a little bit of a slickness to him. He's aggressive. He's a good fighter. I, when, when I first found out that Rigo was fighting against Avalos, I said, oh, that's a great fight. Of course, Rigo is going to, you know, be the favorite. He's going to be the heavy favorite because it's Rigo. But at the same time, I'm like, this is a good fight. This is a good look for Guillermo Rigo, right? But I believe the pressure got to Chris Avalos where a lot of people, they probably start saying, wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You fighting Rigo next? Oh, whoa, 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 man. You really need to think about this, man. Do you know what this man can do to you? You know what, man? Let's try to fight someone else, right? Let's try to fight someone else. Understand something. Chris Avalos was the mandatory. <laughs> he was the mandatory for Guillermo Rigo's title. When you're the mandatory for the champion, and you say, ah, you know what, that's okay, I'll pass. There's other champions out there. You know what, let's go ahead and try to fight someone like a Frampton, you know, or someone like that. Which is smart, okay? For Chris Avalos, is smart. The only problem is you're acknowledging the fact that you are okay with being third best, fourth best or whatever the case may be, at the 122-pound division. So we've already established Guillermo Rigo is a boogeyman. He's very, 
very difficult to deal with, right? But there's only one problem. Coincidentally, after Guillermo Rigo knocks Donaire off the pound for pound list and he takes his place, a lot of fans didn't really like that move. So what do the fans do? Well, the fans, they already acknowledge this big Rigo problem that they have right now. They sitting over here saying, man, what are we going to do? We can't beat this guy. There's no one that we can sick on Rigo to beat him. So what do we do? And this is what they this is what they basically come up with. If we can't beat him, we change the rules. We change the rules. Simple as that. We tell people and we tell the world, don't even get in the ring with him. It's not even important to fight him. Oh, you know what? I don't like his style. We don't like your style, Guillermo. So we don't want to fight you. We don't want our, our guys to fight you. Even though Guillermo Rigo just got a first round knockout, they still don't like his style. Matter of fact, now he's getting first round knockouts, they really don't like his style, right? Now what's real interesting is the dumbass boxing fans, as opposed to the actual fighters at 122, they have conflicting stories of why they don't want to fight Guillermo Rigo. Okay? They're, the stories are not synonymous. What I basically mean is you'll hear fans say shit that the fighters are not even saying. You got these, you know, these fans saying, oh, you know, it's because he's boring, it's because it is, his style sucks, and so on and so forth. But Frampton is not saying that. Leo Santa Cruz is not saying that. Leo Santa Cruz is saying, you know, I, you know, I want to fight him, you know, but my parents won't let me come out the house to fight him, basically. That's what Leo is saying, right? He's basically saying, I'll fight him anytime, any place. Let me at him. Oh, but my promoter is holding me back, right? Like I said before, that's no different than you been in your house and some dude comes to your house saying, come out, you pussy. I'm going to kick your ass. And you, out, you, you, know, you yelling out the window, oh, yeah, you know, we can fight anytime, any place. But my parents won't let me come outside. If it wasn't for that, I would whoop your ass, right? This is basically what Leo Santa Cruz said. Other champions at the division, they use the money excuse. Oh, well, there's no money in fighting Guillermo Rigo. But that's some bullshit. That turns out to be some complete BS. Why? Because Guillermo Rigo is the highest paid fighter at 122 pounds. Did you guys know that? He gets paid more than Leo Santa Cruz, more than Frampton, more than all of them. He's the highest paid fighter at 122. So you can't even use the money excuse. The point I'm making is, once again, the fans, they make up, they, they always do this. The fans, they'll make up their own excuse, right? A fighter could say, oh, you know, I don't want to fight him. And then a fan will come up making a million excuses that the fighter himself didn't even say, didn't even use, right? But let's go ahead and talk about these dumbass excuses that these dumbass casual fans use when they try to defend everyone who's ducking Guillermo Rigo. Okay, so the, the decaf basically says, we don't like his style. That's why we don't want Rigo to fight Leo or, or Rigo to fight this guy and that fight. That guy. We don't like his style, right? Let me explain something to you. You can't conform your opponent's style to what suits you best. Do you understand that? Does that make any sense? You can't say, damn, this motherfucker got a fantastic jab. I'll fight you as long as you don't throw jabs, right? I'll fight you as long as you put your hands down. This is not the WWE where you guys get to rehearse and choreograph every single thing you're planning on doing in the ring for weeks and weeks leading up to the fight, right? Like, you guys are just going to rehearse it, and you're going to be like, okay, so this is what's going to happen, Rigo. The first bell is going to ring. We're going to come out. You're going to put your hands down so I can knock the shit out of you, 
and then you're gonna let me hit you a couple more times right now and after I hit you about 10 times then I'm gonna let you come back and hit me and then we'll go back and forth like that right shit doesn't work that way you can't use the excuse I don't want to fight you because I don't like the way you fight do you know what you just acknowledged all you really said was I don't want to fight you because you are too difficult to fight you're too hard to beat that's all you just admitted imagine you've been out somewhere in some public setting right maybe you at a bar maybe you at a club maybe you at some social gathering and some dude for whatever reason is pissed off at you he calls you out he's calling you out your name he yelling taking off his shirt walking outside waiting for you to come outside everybody looking at you what you gonna do he looks at everybody he thinks for a minute and he says you know what I don't like the way he fights the way he walked out to the front and took off his shirt that was just cheesy and corny I'm not fighting some dude like that how do you think you would be received by everybody who just listened to you say that you would you would be looked at as a coward that's how you would be looked at you people would say you just got punked right ain't no way you're gonna talk your way out of it ain't no way you're gonna say I'm not fighting that guy because I don't like him I don't want to fight that guy because I don't like him that is the exact reason why you're supposed to be fighting him because you don't like him right but fans in boxing at least these decafs these hypocritical ass fans they'll sit here and say oh I don't like him I don't like him <laughs> that's more of a reason for you to get your guy to knock him off if I don't like a certain fighter that's not a reason for me to say I want him out of the sport I don't want anyone to beat him no I want to see someone beat him right this is how this works this is how this works but we know the truth and the truth is they don't want to see anyone get in the ring with him because the truth is a lot of these ignorant ass boxing fans they wake up in cold sweats too you got some fans still having dreams of Donaire getting his ass whooped by Guillermo Rigo. Some of these fans are still waking up in cold sweats playing that Donaire Rigo fight over and over again in their head. Okay? And because of what people seen, because of what Rigo did to Donaire, this is the exact reason why these ignorant ass hypocritical fans they don't want that to ever happen again because that was so heartbreaking it was like a tease for them finally we have a fighter that we like that we could say is one of the best fighters in the world and just like that another fighter that they don't like he takes that away from them they don't want to deal with that pain again they don't want to deal with that pain again these fans are sitting here saying, please, please, Leo, don't ever get in the ring with him because we want you to stay around, right? They were saying the same thing to Mares. These fans are praying that these fighters don't get in the ring with Guillermo Rigo because they know what the outcome is going to most likely be. I remember before the Rigo versus Donaire fight, I was at a gym bringing my kids over there to spar and you know I, I, I pretty much know the people over there but anyway they were all anti Rigo and pro pro Nonito Donaire right so everybody in that gym at least the majority of them they were saying Donaire's going to win the fight Rigo doesn't have enough experience he only has this amount of fights and so on and so forth they said Donaire's going to win right right after the fight I talked to these same cats, at least one in particular. I talked to him and I say, you know, what did you think about the fight? 
His only response, you know what his response was? His only response was, yeah, but nobody's going to watch him. Nobody's going to watch him. You, did you hear what Bob Arum said and so on? And this big ass smile lit up on him. Nobody's going to watch him. He didn't say anything about the fight. He was happy because he was basically looking at this as, oh my God, thank God. No one else is going to have to get their ass whooped that I like by this guy, Guillermo Rigo. That's what he basically said to me. And that's what these fans are saying. Okay. These fans are waving the white flag because they know that they can't think of anyone that's going to beat this guy. That is the most ridiculous thing to say is I don't want my guy to beat him because we don't like him. We don't like the way he fights. You ain't supposed to like nothing about the dude. You already don't like him. There is nothing. Like I said, Rigo just got a first round knockout. Do you think there's anything that Rigo could possibly do to get these people to like him, to like his style? Get the hell out of here with that. That says it all right there. So all these people are going to do is they are going to pray that Rigo doesn't get his hands on the fighters that they really, really like. But I'm going to tell you right now, you can run, you can hide, it don't matter. Rigo is going to most likely keep winning. And you fans, you hypocritical, biased-ass fans, you're going to keep hating the fact that he's winning. But you're not going to be able to stop him. And all of these fighters that you actually like, they're going to start dropping off one by one. And Guillermo Rigo is still going to be around. That's what's going to happen. I'm on to the next one.